Hi, welcome to today's cut lesson. In today's exercise, we would be modeling this staircase with rails. Please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't yet done that and be part of the family. Also do well to like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm push it to a lot more people. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, do leave them down in the comment section below and I would address them as soon as I can. Without wasting much time, let's go ahead and begin with today's exercise. To start with, let's open a part template and so new. And then we'll be working with the metric template and the part create 2D and 3D object. We select the standard MMIPT and create. Now let's pick the 2D sketch command and create the sketch on the XY plane. We pick the line command. Let's draw this profile here. You can right click and then OK. First of all, let's make this line a vertical line and then we would dimension. The length of this line is 280. Just enter that. Let's zoom in to get our working focus. The height of this is 190. Let me move this dimension out of the way. So just touch it and drag it. Awesome. Now we pick the vertical constraint command and apply that between the middle point of this horizontal line and the origin. We pick the horizontal constraint command and also apply a horizontal constraint between the middle point of this vertical line and the origin. You can press escape to get off that command. Now let's pick the line command again and continue to draw our profile. You can zoom in. So just pick this point here, draw a vertical line and then we can apply an equal constraint between this line and this line. We pick the line command and then we continue to draw our profile. Okay, so let's go this way. We will go up one last time and then we will draw a length of 1000 and enter that. Oh, 1000, sorry. So just double click on this and enter 1000. Now let's apply the equal constraint between this line and this line, and then another one between this line and that line. That fully constrains that part of the sketch. We pick the line command again, we are not done. Let's continue to draw our profile. So this way, we would go down, and then we'd go this way to a distance of 100,000, sorry, Let's press escape to get off the line command for now. We will apply the equal constraint between this line and that line, and then also between this horizontal line and this one. You can right click and then OK. We pick the line command. Let's draw a line from here. The length of this one is also 1050. Let's enter that. We would move to the right, making sure we snap onto that point and this one. We can right click and then OK. That fully constrains our sketch. So we can finish. Let me zoom in. So we would extrude. The extrude command, we will select this profile. It has even been automatically selected. We would specify a distance of 1000. Let's apply that symmetrically with the direction and OK. Next, we will pick the 2D sketch command and let's offset a plane from this face. And so we would offset to a distance of negative 100 and we will check that. Now on this plane, let's select it and create a sketch. Let's slice so we see that plane and we would project some lines onto that plane, which would be this one, and then also that one. Now pick the line command. Let's draw a line from this projected line upwards to a distance of 1000 and enter that. You can right click and then restart another one. Also locate the middle point of this line here and we will draw a vertical line. You can right click and then restart so we draw the last one also from this line we projected upwards you can right click and then ok we want to apply the equal constraint between this line and this line 
and then also between this line and that line. All right. Now we would dimension the distance between this line and this line right here is 300. Also between this line and then this very one is 300. Next, let me pan down, pick the line command. Let's draw a line here and dimension the length of this line as 500. Let's enter that. Let's place a point on that line and we would dimension the distance between this point and the point we just placed as 300 and enter. Now apply a coincidence relationship between the point we placed and this point right here. You can right click and then OK. Let's do the same on this side also. So we pick the line command. Let's draw our line here. We will pick the point and place it on the line. Now we would dimension the distance between this point and this edge here as 300 and enter that and apply coincidence relationship. First of all, let's dimension this line. I think we didn't do that. So 500 and enter. Now we would apply the coincidence relationship between the point and the stop point of the line. You can right click and then OK. Now let's offset this line so come down to a distance of 500 let's enter would also offset this line we would come down to a distance of 500 enter that in the dynamic input box and press enter now we pick the line command let's connect this point here to this point right here and then also this point we see here to this very point here you can right click and then OK. Now we would dimension the distance between this line and that line. Just give it whatever dimension you get. Let me zoom in so you see we have 403.696. You should have something like that. So just click to place and check. Now let's pick the line command again. We would connect this point to this point and then also this point to this point. Now let's apply a fillet. The fillet radius is 150 to this line, this one, also this and that, to so this and that as well. Just watch and do same to so this line and that one, also this and that, this and that line, and then finally this and that. All right, our sketch is fully defined. Let's close this and finish this sketch. Now, this is all we have to do for this part. You can go ahead and save this. I have saved it as staircase, and so we move on. Open now an assembly template, and so under assembly, assemble 2D and 3D components, we select the standard IAM, and we would create. Here, we would bring in the part we just created, which is the staircase, and so click on place. And let's locate that file there. It is right here for me. And so I would open, you can right click and then place grounded at origin. Now let's press escape since we need just one of it. I would like to change the view and the visual style to shade it with edges. So we move on. Now what we want to do is to go back into the design tab and we will pick the option that says insert frame. It says we have to save our work before we continue. So I'll do that. I'll just save this as assembly one staircase. And save. Now we can insert our frames. And so the frame we want to insert is going to be category the round tube. The standard is the AS. I think it's Australian standard. The family also it is this right here just watch and select that the size let me drop this down and choose the 76.1 by 2.3 let me select that one the material will be still mild appearance is as material and then let me check this option that says merge frame so we want to treat these frames you are going to select as if it was one full frame member and so let me select this we see it applies 
the frame member i'll continue selecting okay so this one that one making sure we select all curves as well okay just watch and do same at this point and then finally this one right here just click on the plus sign you see and okay you can okay again so we can select the other frame members which is going to be the vertical ones so this that and then that one you can press okay now we okay again this is asking us to create files for these frame members which is fine and so would okay just give it a while and then just like that our frame members have been added at this point let's turn off the visibility of this plane here so click on the plus sign next to the staircase let's locate that plane which is this one right click and then we'll turn off the visibility would we'll also do same for the sketch awesome all right now i would like to insert a frame cap right here we would create that part also we want to create that part within this assembly template so for that let's go back to the assembly tab and choose the create option now it's asking us to name this component let's just name this as the end cap and then we would browse the template just like we would have if we were opening a part template so metric and then standard mm ipt which is this one let's okay you can choose the folder you want to save this i'll leave this on my desktop and press okay now we would okay and then we select the face we want to put the plane for this very part we want to create let me select this face and then you can right click and then choose the option that says new sketch now let's locate those Things. there they are right here they are little so you have to zoom in i will select the x y plane here so i can create my sketch but let me get the view this way that makes creating the sketch easier that let me project some geometries which is going to be this one so i will pick next the two point center rectangle let me draw a rectangle here now I would dimension and so the length of this is 150 let's enter and then the width is 90 let me enter that let's apply a fillet the radius of this fillet is 20 to all four corners of this rectangle let me zoom in so you see all right now we can finish this and we want to extrude the profile is going to be this one the extrusion direction is right the distance let's make that 15 and we would okay now this part has been created but remember we are still within the part file of this very end cap now let's return to the assembly so we click on the return up here let me get the isometric view but then this part has been created which is the end cap it has been created as if it is formed exactly on this base but that is not what we want we want to be able to detach this from the base so just locate the end cap here right click on it and deselect the option that says adaptive now let's see we will be able to move it awesome now let's copy Control c and then we would paste two more because we need three for this side now let's apply the right constraints and so constraints we want to apply a mate between let me turn this around select this very face then let me do this face and apply i can also do concentrically this whole and this very well. let me apply and then also a flash between this face and that face but i'll set an offset distance of 55 and i would apply now i can close this let's inspect and see if it moves 
Okay, it isn't. Let's do the same for the other two. And so constrain. Let me first do this face. And then I'll do this face. Let me apply also concentrically this and then that. Let me apply and then a flash between this face and that face to an offset distance of 55 just to input the distance between this face and that face. Let's apply. Then we'll do same for the last one. And so let's do a mate between this face. And then let's see this face. Let me apply concentrically also this hole and this pipe. Let's apply and then a flash between this face and that face to an offset distance of 55 and apply. I can close this. Let me get the isometric view that has been neatly done. Next, we want to mirror this on the opposite side. And so let's do that right away. The mirror command, it is up here. Now the component we want to mirror, we can select this frame here hold down the shift key and then click on the last end cap so it selects all of them. The mirror plane, let's do the X, Y plane. So we see the preview of that on the opposite side, which is exactly what we want. And so we press next and then OK. Let me get the isometric view. Awesome. We are almost done. Let's apply some appearance. And so let's select this base. We will drop this down and choose the option that says blocks to give it a more realistic look. We'll do the same for the rules and so just select the frame, hold down the shift key, select the last end cap so it selects everything in between. We can drop this down and also do black cast is fine. All right, now let's change the view and include some shadows would we'll also include some reflections and the ground plane and that is it all right and so that's going to be it for today's tutorial i hope you get some value out of this if you do, please consider subscribing to this channel. Also do well to like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm push it to a lot more people. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can leave them down in the comment section below. I will address them as soon as I can. Don't forget to share this with your card friends and save this. I'll see you soon with the next tutorial. Bye.